I, I think com a quarterly company-wide meetings, if they're effectively facilitated, they can be not only very agile, but ridiculously beneficial for the overall culture. Welcome everybody to another episode of Real Agile or BS. I'm Peter Saddington with Bob Hartman, both from Agile for All, and we love to answer your frequently asked questions in the Agile and Scrum space. Today, we have an interesting topic that we'd love to cover with you. It's quarterly big room planning sessions. Is that Agile or is that BS? Agile Bob will let you take the first crack at it. Well, so um, I think it will depend a little bit on how people do it. I actually have changed my mind on this over time. I think quarterly big room planning for uh, groups that are working together is very agile. And I've actually seen a cadence where I really like it. Turns out a quarter is 13 weeks and, you know, 52 weeks divided by four <laughs> and six two week sprints and one week for planning and a celebration and learning. Uh, really works out well for a cadence. I really like it. I've got a number of clients doing that today. It's working really well for them. But I think the key is to make sure you use big room planning effectively. Sometimes companies get into a big room and they have a bunch of people there and all they do is talk and mm -hmm. nothing happens. And they, they kind of say, we're going to do all these things. And I think over time, what I've realized is the biggest thing you can do during big room planning is identify dependencies between those groups. So how do we identify those dependencies so we don't walk right into that trap during the coming, coming weeks and months? Um, I think if you can do that, so identify dependencies, identify a broad stroke of what you think the work could be so the teams are all aligned on that, identify the goal for the next quarter, all really good things. I am not in favor of people saying quarterly big room planning is to figure out what we're gonna do in every single sprint for the next quarter. That, that to me just goes back to the big, big everything up front. And that's, that's definitely not agile, but used effectively. I could see this being really good for a lot of teams. I would not do it if I had a single team. Mm. I would do it only when we have multiple teams, we have dependencies between those teams and they need some sort of higher level um, alignment and structure for identifying those dependencies and, and managing those dependencies. So I would do it if I have more than one team probably even you know more than three or four teams would be my guess. How about you, Peter? I, I, I think there's a lot of qualifications I can add in here. Uh, I think the word that, I think, think the first word that kind of creates a little bit of tension is the word planning. Um, and, and that idea kind of brings about this, this whole consideration of, okay, we're bringing everyone together to plan it out. Now, I'm not a big fan of big big trying to, you know, big groups trying to plan everything up front and trying to understand the future. However, I will say that I agree with you. I'm finding that having quarterly big, big company or company wide meetings for alignment are actually really, really powerful. For example, and I'm just pulling from the, from my example for this, this year, I'm consulting with a startup with that has multiple teams all over the world. And we're finding we did a fall summit uh, earlier this, uh, a couple months ago. And one of the things that was great was being able to bring everyone in. Uh, it was really, really interesting security consideration considering COVID and everything, but we ended up flying in tons of people for this summit and we're going to be having those quarterly. Now, do I think this is a great idea? Absolutely. Because we have an international team that face-to-face -face conversation is super important. Having a powerful and specific agenda for that, I, I have found has been absolutely essential. For example, the first time that we did this all company summit, this quarterly uh, meeting of sorts, I ended up immediately moving into a facilitator role. Not only is that a place where I'm very comfortable at, but it was absolutely necessary because we would have ended up just having us all 16, 20 of us sitting around this table just talking. And so to have an agenda is really important of which, which things that we need to talk about, which things that we need to align on, maybe do some discovery, some high level planning around what's coming up, some initiatives, as well as the dependencies and constraints on each team. But having a 
facilitator is, I think, is one of those one of those elements that is absolutely necessary to make these large meetings, these large group meetings, really effective. And I'm not saying that I was the most effective facilitator, but I will say that certainly my presence there and facilitating each section and keeping people on track and saying, okay, that's something for you know the parking lot. Uh, that's something that we can talk about uh, later. Let's not go on these rabbit trails. And I think it's really important that you have an effective facilitator, especially when you have large groups or anything like that. So I would say in terms of quarterly big room planning sessions, probably the planning, not so much is agile, but bringing people together, man, I'll tell you, especially in today's world, bringing people together is something really special. And I, I feel like there's, there's a lot of non-functional uh, kind of intangible people, people value there that can be really bled out of those opportunities. What do you, what do you think, Bob? Yeah, I think it's interesting that um, you mentioned the people factor. And I think that's really where my clients go as well, because they're trying to do a few things. So first of all, whether you call it planning or alignment, it doesn't matter to me, but they're doing some sort of figuring out what the future semi looks like, what the roadmap could look like. And I, I hate the word roadmap, but they're just laying out. These are things we think yep. we could accomplish. Here's our goal. Um, so alignment, planning, whatever you want to call that. But that's the less, less important part. They're figuring out dependencies. That's very important. They're celebrating the previous quarter. Very important from the people perspective. Let's get people to celebrate the fact that they've done something good. And they also use it for growth. So professional development. So that week, and the reason I like it as a week is because that's a lot of stuff to try to cover in a couple of days. So when you're flying people in from all over the place, you definitely don't want to fly in people and you know have a, have a $50,000 meeting in terms of travel and have them there for a day. Mm -hmm. So let's make that that time be valuable, which I'm sure is some of what you mentioned that you did because you you had those relationship building exercises, you had some people learning about each other, how can how what are their skill sets, mm -hmm. growing their skill sets, um, getting to know you and the other people in the startup, it, it, those kinds of things are really important to do, and if we don't schedule time for them. Agile doesn't leave us space for that. It's like, you know, okay, it's going to be four story points for relationship building. I've never seen that story ever in a, in a sprint. That's really good. So, um, you know, we got to do something once in a while to, to help with team building and morale. And um, and I, I think this is a great way to do it. I've, I've got more and more clients doing it now and it just, it's working. And so whether anybody else thinks it's real agile or BS, it's real agile for these people and it's working in the real world. So I'm going to call it real agile. I, I would completely agree with you there. I think it's interesting as, as, as long as you and I have been in the world of agile, it's fascinating that we, we, that I haven't heard a lot of talk about the whole idea that agile, and it's interesting that you, you, you said it this way is that agile doesn't really have or have space or capacity. I know you didn't use that word, but capacity for kind of people building or building relationships because there's so much to do within a sprint and we have a, a you know the sprint planning and then we go through the work and then we review and retrospect and then we do it again i think quarterly it's, it's just for lack of a better term quarterly company wide meetings can be really really effective and they are very agile especially if you focus on the relationship aspect of it and the people aspect of it i think uh, i think for the the startup that i'm consulting with it was absolutely essential because we had people that have actually never met each other before and this was something that i was kind of pushing for it's like we got people in spain and germany and in india and in california and new york like we're, we all join this startup and we're all getting paid to do work together, but we actually have never even met each other. And so this first quarterly meeting where we brought in about 20 people or so uh, to an entire summit was really, really not only fun, but it was an awesome opportunity to understand the person behind the work and learning how they communicated, learning how they deal, dealt with dissonance or conflict, learning how their communication style, learning about some of the idiosyncrasies of those individuals and why they might not understand when I speak and I say stuff like this and I need to maybe go a little bit deeper. And so those relationship nuances, especially for someone like myself, really helped me be a more effective facilitator and a more effective consultant in helping this company grow their products. So I, I think com a quarterly company-wide meetings, if they're effectively facilitated, they can be not only very agile, but ridiculously beneficial for the overall culture. And let me give you a little context for size too, because you mentioned a group of about 20 that you got brought together. Uh, one of my clients, it's a group of a fairly large company. Uh, and they, the group that does this on a regular basis, they're a group of probably about a hundred 
uh, scrum team members, mm -hmm. and then about a hundred additional people that come in as stakeholders and leaders from various parts of the company, so that that group is totally empowered to make decisions on anything. So, and, and that's why they bring in those extra people to make sure that they don't leave that meeting thinking, oh, we have to get an answer for this because they want to know they've got the answer. And right, basically the person says, yes, I agree with that. That's a good way to go. When they can leave and have that confidence, it's just tremendously freeing for the team. They don't have to worry about doing the wrong thing anymore. They've heard those same people say, this is the right thing to do. Let's go after it. Mm -hmm. So I, I think, so just from a scale, uh, 200 people is, is doable with really good facilitation because obviously a group of 200 can get way off track in a hurry. For sure. Absolutely. So I think we're in agreement here, Agile Bob and myself at Agile Peter. It, our quarterly large meetings, Agile, well, call it what it may, we believe this is a valuable thing to consider for your organization, whether it's a startup or even if it's a medium or large enterprise. But there's many different opinions out there. So what say you? Let us know in the comments below. Obviously, subscribe, smash the like button, and we'll see you guys in the next one. Thank <laughs> you.